Good morning, everybody, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, very, I'm Thomas Dory from Germany, and I'm very happy to be here uh, today. It's my first time in uh, UAE, and uh, I, I'm very happy to present you the revolution in biogas, because I'm quite sure you have not heard about it, because it's pretty new, the revolution in biogas. So that's much different than what we have heard before. It's much easier to understand than uh, H2 and all these things. Because, and I'm also talking about very trivial things, which um, are very, but still very important. So I started the company in 2010, uh, basically in Germany, already with the idea of small farm-sized biogas plants, small. You know, in Germany, we have these megawatt biogas plants. And I think the next chart is showing that. And I will go back. You know, we have like 9,000 biogas plants in Germany producing uh, for nearly 10 million people uh, energy, especially also heat, because that is required in Germany. But it has been invented in Germany in the 80s to produce fertilizer. And I think that is a very important message today, what I want to convey here. We turn the bio waste in 20 days into a useful fertilizer. Yeah? So, and we take out the methane. That means we take out the energy from the waste and turn it into fertilizer. So let's go back to this one. So I started that with 20 kilowatt. Everybody in Germany was laughing about me and they're saying, Thomas, this is bullshit. That never works. Do a 500 kilowatt plant. That is really something substantial. But I was not on that way because I had a very different vision. So I've built over 140 biogas plants globally in concrete, in concrete. But I was always from the beginning jealous about photovoltaic and wind because these prices were coming down, while biogas prices are getting up because of material costs getting up and so on. So for me, it was very clear, we have to build biogas plants like trucks in a factory. We have to mass produce it. And when you look at that, you have a completely different scenario. That's why I call it, it's a paradigm shift, it's a revolution in biogas in size, in cost, financing, resale. Resale, I'm always talking about resale. Have you ever bought a second-hand biogas plant? <laughs> yeah, I see the smiles on the face. No, but it's now, it's now possible to buy a second-hand biogas plant, movability, etc. So it's quite an exciting su subject because also now our target market is it's just huge. Every hotel, every restaurant in the world, every food factory, um, every airport, I mean, everywhere where you have people, you have biomass. And there we can put the plant. So we talked about the biogas history in Germany. We can skip that. So why biogas? You know, you guys have photovoltaic and sun is shining, but at nighttime, <laughs> nighttime. So biogas is what we call base load, 24-7, 365. You know, no matter whether there's a hurricane or a cloud coverage or nighttime, biogas is there. Second, there's this waste problem. You know, you have that food waste, for example, that is a real issue. Yeah? Or the uh, slurry from animals, you know, or all these things, all the biomass. We'll talk about biomass in a was in the next chart. So basically, we are converting a problem in 20 days into a fertilizer, which is very much needed in this country. So that is uh, also a very important point. Biogas also can produce four income streams, while photovoltaic, you only have one income stream, right? So you have here kilowatt electric, kilowatt thermic. You probably don't need kilowatt thermic, but we can also do something with this thermic. Then you have the biofertilizer, and you maybe avoid a gate fee, because you have to maybe pay money to get rid of your waste. In Japan, they pay 200 US dollars per ton of food waste 
to get rid of. So you can imagine that's good business because you're avoiding this and you make money with the fertilizer you're producing. Plus on top you get electricity or whatever you want. So let's take a look at what is biomass because that is also is maybe not always totally clear. So let's talk about the most simplest things. The shit from the animals, you know, that is the most easiest biomass to work with. Then we have agricultural crops and residues. So basically what comes from the farms, the leftovers can be used. Whatever is done in the food industry, that is also uh, excellent material to work with. Then we also produce biomass. <laughs> Yeah, that means basically next to all water treatment plants, we can have a small biogas plant. That sludge can be used to produce the fertilizer, the electricity, cooking gas. And also, I don't want to forget it, hydrogen. We are also working with Fachhochschule Aachen on two hydrogen projects. Yeah, so biogas is not old fashioned. Biogas can do these kind of things too. Then there is two fractions which we don't like so much. That is a forestry fraction. You can also do biogas with the forestry fraction, but it's more difficult. So we stay away from that. That's not the main market. And then you have the municipal solid waste. And usually that is two fractions. These are two fractions. What we call this, there's a wet fraction, that is biomass. And then you have the solid fraction, exactly. So. The wet fraction, of course, is biomass, but I'm always saying, careful, this can be contaminated. There can be some chemicals in it, some antibiotics and so on. So this is more tricky. It is possible to work with this, but to start learning about biogas, you should use the easier systems, like the food waste in this hotel. I'm sure they have like one to two tons of food waste in this hotel. <coughs> We could put the digester next to it and give the cooking gas back to the kitchen. That's all. And then they use the fertilizer so the palm trees are growing and everybody is happy. Let me tell you quickly about the process because it's a very simple process. You have in the middle the anaerobic digester. It's, imagine just it's a black box that is closed. So there is no smell. People always think biogas has smell. There's no smell. So then we have the input side where we have the agricultural, animal waste, food waste, industrial waste, whatever we have in terms of biogas. And these wastes can be used singly or what I call them, you can make a cocktail out of it. <laughs> yeah, so that means you can, you can uh, say, we can take some animal waste, some food waste, some some dry bread from a bakery or whatever. You can put it to, all together into the digester. And then after 20 days, the material comes out. Biogas comes out uh, every day, all the time. And this digestate can be used as a fertilizer, for example, also as bedding material for cows and animals. You can make compost. But there's also one thing, it's not on here, that's called this material can be used by larvae, like black soldier fly larvae. They eat this and these larvae, again, these black soldier flies are food for chicken. And I know this country is eating a lot of chicken. So basically this can be used to produce these larvae and these larvae go then basically for the chicken. So you can see there are so many things we can do same with biogas, here we just say vehicle fuel, heat, electricity, hydrogen, and the list goes on and on and on. There is just one message I want to give you with this chart. Don't read it, just listen to what I'm saying. We have very different biomass, frying oil, waste bread, straw, corn silage, intestines from the slaughterhouse waste, blood, chicken dung, cow dung, brewery grain, you know, all these things are biomass. One ton of substrate can produce two kilowatt or 70 kilowatt. So you see there's a huge difference and that is like 
Think about your stomach. You know, what happens when you eat oil or sugar? It's a high calorie. What is when you drink water? Low calorie. It's the same thing here with the substrates. So basically, I want to show you with this, we have all these kind of substrates which we can use, but they all are giving different output. So that is what we have to uh, keep in mind when we, when we do this. Now I want to basically go and talk about the product, the BAP Mobile. It uh, usually, the, the key is the digester, that is this, this unit here. This is the digester where the biomass goes in and it stays in there for, uh, for about 20 days. But it's a continuous process. Every day it needs to be fed. And then we can have here, of course, several units, it's possible. And then we can also have like this unit, we call this as a technical container. In that technical container can be, for example, a gas engine or whatever in, in terms of technical usage. And then the good thing is those two things can be put on a truck, put up in the mountains, installed in five days, and the biogas plant is ready to go. So that was my vision when I started this whole thing. We can go into off-grid areas, we can go into islands, we can go all these places where basically the other biogas guys can't go. <laughs> okay, so I want to show you a little movie right now about this plant we have uh, running right now in India, but we also installed it now in Bhutan. In Honduras, they will do that. In Bulgaria, they will do it. So that you get a little idea how that works. Here, they show the food waste. Let's, let's have a quick look at this. And uh, I hope we get this, get this going. Okay. Ah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Thanks. Biogas engine for producing power. The CHP 
CHP consists of a heat recovery unit, which utilizes the biogas engine for gases at 400 degrees centigrade to produce hot water for digestive heating. Hot water inlet and outlet temperatures are consistently monitored through temperature sensor. Can your bird plant can handle substrates like cow slurry, pig slurry, poultry litter, food waste, market waste, and the market waste. The market waste is produced with the highest German quality standards and Indian insurance offering the customer a superior product with low capital and operational expenditure, thus creating value for money <coughs> and value for money. Yeah, there is one thing I want to say right away. You have seen they have used some water to liquefy that. And of course, we can recycle this water. That means when the digestate comes out, we make a solid liquid separation and we re reuse this water. Because I think it is not sustainable to use water all the time, fresh water. So that is only the water we use at the very beginning. Then you have seen, that is a feature I don't have to explain here. Our system works in minus 25. So this is not your issue, but if, of course we are in places like Canada, in Hokkaido, where they have minus 30 degrees, in Germany we have minus 20 degrees. So in all these places, our digester system is working because it works up to minus 25. Okay, let me see. Yeah, I want to finish my presentation talking about BAT Mini. BAT Mini is the theory, the one you have seen before is 1.5 tons per day. It's about the size of a 20-foot container. And the Mini series, it's much smaller. That starts with 100 kg. This is a 100 kg plant, which we are providing at the moment in India to the universities. So that on the university you have all this food waste and that can be converted and given back to the kitchen as cooking gas. And then I always say we are ready to give courses at the university about training operators and then not only academically they know what to do, they can go out and operate also the biogas plant. And you can see here that is the plant in New College in uh, Chennai, I was just last week lecturing there. I had 200 students and tons of questions. It was a real nice session. And you can see it's really, the food waste goes here into the shredder. It's very compact. You have seen it. The table is much smaller. It goes in here. There you have the tank. From here you feed it in. And then basically it goes back to the room right next door where the, where the cooking uh, starts happen and the biofertilizer can always be used on site. So it's really a very, very compact and small thing. Finally, we also have a uh, BOBA. BOBA stands for BERT Online Biogas Academy. So we are giving global training for students that speak English. If they speak local language, we have an issue. We need other trainers. But this is where we are teaching them about biogas, teaching them about our, our system, and so on. Okay, one thing is interesting, which you can't do with other biogas plants. We can offer leasing, because it's a mobile plant. We give five to 10 year warranty, so also the, the finance institutes are happy to give five year leasing. That's absolutely a revolution in biogas. Plus, I have created something, when I heard about SAAS software as a service, I said there must be biogas as a service. Why? Because this Hilton Hotel, they might come after this presentation and say, Thomas, we love to have that, but we don't want to get dirty hands, right? We don't want to get dirty hands. We only want to tell our customers we are sustainable, we are taking the waste, we are converting the waste into fertilizer, and the whole story is beautiful. Then I have to say, okay, we need ARAC, where we get the training, train the operator, and then the operator, operators from here, they come every day here for half an hour, and that's all it takes to feed the plant, and the rest is all automatic. So biogas as a service is a very important concept to move biogas into much, much more applications. Yeah, and then also we are here, 
because we are looking for partners. We have a franchise system and that means these partners are implementing our technology locally because we don't know what are the rules and regulations in this country, the permits and all of that. We have no idea. So we provide our partners with all the know-how about the technology. We provide them with the core, the core components and the rest they can buy in the, in the country and then the whole thing gets put together and we're also sending at the beginning our engineers from India to uh, put it together. Well, thank you very much for your attention.